Guys, today's video is not going to be for everyone. This channel brings you all things interesting, the good, the bad, and most recently, the supernatural, it seems. But before I get into that, I just want to say thank you to all who commented on my last videos. Capturing something like that is a first for me, and I needed your help in figuring out what in the world I captured, and you came through for me. So thank you to Oscar, Sonia, DJ, Michelle, Lee, Daniel, and all the rest of you who let me know you watched and actually saw what I captured. I read and appreciate all your contributions. Now, we had to go to Bartow County for personal business and thought, why not see if there is anything interesting there that I could bring to you? What popped out were some of the most gruesome stories I have ever heard, and I hesitated to even bring them to you. But I did promise to bring you true and interesting stories, no matter the genre, and YouTube loves when you have at least one video per week. So if you're affected by hearing about the evils of men, this is where you click off. But before you go, remember to love yourself and others, subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. For those of you who are still here, discretion is still advised. These gruesome events happened in Bartow County and more specifically in Cartersville, Georgia. Welcome to another episode of This Happened Here. On this channel, we take you with us to find true and interesting stories from around the world. In this episode, I'll be telling you about three very gruesome and sad stories. Two of these victims have been identified, but no arrests have been made in connection with their murders. So if you know anything about these people, I will be leaving a contact number in my description below for you to call. Now, if stories like this and those that I have brought to you before are something that interests you, subscribe and click the all notification bell so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. And though this episode is something that I don't think anyone will like, at least like my efforts in bringing it to you and share it if so inclined. I am your host, LT Bartek. Is the first story. I will tell this story from the point of view of the person who found this body. This is how it played out in my mind. I will call him Harry to protect his identity. It was Friday, August 31st, 2018. Harry sat at his desk, rolling his ballpoint pen between his fingers and looking out his office window at the buildings outside. He was trying to hide how anxious he was to get away and start his weekend. He longed to be on the lake, and 5 p.m. was moving slower than a snail on a treadmill powered by a sloth with a case of the Mondays. His job was not hard, just a little stressful, but today he had enough and needed to get away. He needed the wind in his hair and the feel of the spray of the lake water on his face as he speeds across the surface and pretended as if he had not a care in the world. Little did he know that this amazing dream, soon turned into reality, was going to be a recurring nightmare for many a night. It was now the morning of September 1st, 2018, a beautiful day in Cartersville, Georgia. The temperature was 85 degrees and the wind was mild. A perfect day to take the boat out on the water. He loaded up his car with food and beer, of course, and made sure to take his tools, fishing gear, and can't forget that suntan lotion and everything else he would need to take his boat 
to the Red Top Mountain State Park and to Alatoona Lake. He had only been on the lake for a few hours when he saw off in the distance, right in his drive path, something floating in the water. He slowed his boat, not wanting to drive over whatever it was, and slowly steered over to it. Putting the boat in neutral, he moved port side to get a closer look at the floating object. The stench was what got him first. Then he saw what it was. The horrid sight of it immediately invited his breakfast sandwich to erupt from his stomach to say hello. He felt faint and had to throw himself back and onto the sole of the boat as his sight darkened and returned to normal. After a few seconds, he managed to pick himself back up and standing on shaky legs, he looked again at what was in the water. Floating beside his boat was the body of a deceased man. Harry could only stand there looking at the body. The body was bloated, having been in the water for a few days, but he could still make out that it was a male and Caucasian. His buddy, who was lying at the bow, walked over to him after seeing Harry just standing there looking in the water and immediately screamed, What the heck is that? Is that a body? Immediately, Harry was pulled out of immobility and ran to his phone. He dialed 911. By 5.40 p.m., the Georgia DNR game wardens had recovered the body while other officials directed traffic and commanded crowd control. They pulled the body from the water and took it to the forensic lab. They noted that the deceased was a Caucasian male between 55 and 65 years old. He was approximately 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed about 230 pounds. He had on shorts and t-shirt along with black swimming flippers. When they pulled him from the water, he was found wearing a backpack laden with sand and rocks. Ankle weights were affixed to his feet and a rope was tied around his waist with a small boat anchor affixed to it. Forensic also found that he had a gunshot wound to his head which they ascertained was what killed him. He was dead before hitting the water. To date, many people have come forward with information, but this individual has still not been identified and his murder is still unsolved. The Bartow County Police has issued a statement saying, we are working with reported missing person cases investigators to attempt to identify the man, but so far, we have had no luck. They also stated that the deceased man doesn't match up with any missing person in Bartow County or Metro Atlanta, nor did the recognition software identify the man. If anyone knows anything, again, the number to call is in the description below. Now this next story is really gruesome. I will tell it from the sanitation worker's point of view. I repeat, discretion is advised. When other people would find working at the Bartow County landfill in Cartersville, Georgia, to put it nicely, an unpleasant job, Sammy loves it. He was an introvert who loved being by himself and the solitude of this job as a bulldozer operator Piling up the drunk bought in by the garbage truck was perfect for him. On some good days, he would find treasures, treasures that he could get money ranging from a few dollars to a lot of dollars. But at other times, these treasures only had value to the former owners, mementos, pictures, and old relics that by the time they reached him were broken into pieces and useless like lost dreams. Sure, it's stunk to high heavens here, and a lot of the young uns who get hired on don't stay longer than a day. But he had been here for many years, and by now he was completely nose blind. 
On the other side of finding treasures, he had come across some really nasty things, dead animals, slabs of old rotten uncooked animal meat that the hunters had just gutted and tossed out, and a lot of rotten foods. There was so much rotten food. This hurt him the most because there were so many starving in the area, while some had so much that they could afford to toss it. But nothing had prepared him for what he had found that day. That thing forever changed him, and he could never go back to being the person he was. It was mid-morning of August 13th, 2018. While out doing his job like he always does, piling up the garbage brought in early in the morning, he had shoved the bucket of the tractor to pick up a pile in doing that, he tore open one of those black garbage bags and something big fell out. Normally he would just scoop again, but something made him stop and get out of the cab. His nose blindness could not cover the horrid odor that admitted from the now half-covered object that was sitting at his feet. Using his right foot, he moved the plastic away to get a better look at the contents. The moment he saw what it was, he had to brace himself against the tractor just to keep himself from falling. For what was laying on the pile of garbage in front of him was a torso of a woman. His frightful eyes looked around unconsciously, not sure why. Then his brain registered more bags similar to the one at his feet. He looked around and found a big stick. Using it, he bored open the other bags and found that they contained the other parts of this female. Sammy immediately pulled out his phone and called his boss. The next call was to 911 at the Bartow County Sheriff's Office. The body of the deceased woman was later identified as Nicole Dubois of Fairmount, West Virginia. She was 20 years old. She was between 5 feet 2 inches and 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighed about 150 pounds. She had brown or reddish hair. She also had tattoos on her chest. My heart goes out to her loved ones. Again, if anyone having information in regards to her murder is asked to call the Bartow County Sheriff's Office or 770 387-5110. Now for my final story. I will tell this story from the point of view of Robert Woody's boss. I will call him Dan. Dan looked up at the clock on the wall and then rose from his chair bracing himself on the armrest to look through the interior window to see if Robert had finally come to work. He depended on Bob. He was his right-hand man, and Bob knew that, so if he were not coming in, he would have called in the morning to let Dan know. Bob was one of his most dependable employees, and Dan was beginning to get a very bad feeling in the pit of his stomach as the day passed. At lunchtime, after making several calls to Bob and his wife, Anne's cell, and getting only voicemail from both, he decided to go to his house to check on him. Dan's life would never be the same, forever transformed by the profound discovery that awaited him on that fateful day. It was Wednesday, April 25th, 1990. And by the time he reached Robert and Han Woody's house, it was 1.30 p.m. Dan walked up to the front door and rang the bell. He waited, but there was no response. He rang it again and waited, thinking he might be asleep. Not hearing anything, he pulled out his cell phone and found Bob's name among his contacts. He pressed the call button and heard the phone ringing inside the house. Dan frowned at this and 
moved over to look inside the house, but he couldn't see anything. He went back to the front door and put his ears against the door, trying to listen for footsteps, but there was nothing. He inhaled unconsciously and detected a mild but awful odor. Fear crept into his chest, and he instantly knew something was wrong. He positioned himself and smashed the door open. Laying on his back was Robert. He was in bad shape. He looked as if he was badly beaten and there were holes in his shirt marred by dark stains. They were stab wounds. On closer inspection, he found that Robert was dead. Dan called out to Anne, but like with Robert, he got no response. He hung up the call he was still trying to make with Robert and quickly dialed 911. While on the phone, he walked through the house to find Anne. Anne was laying on the bed with large red handprints marks around her neck, and she too had holes with dark stains on her top. There was no doubt she was also dead. Upon investigation by the Bartow County PD, they ascertained that the couple had been killed between midnight and 3 a.m. on April 25, 1990. They were last seen alive at 11 p.m. the night before. Though the people of the community have put pressure on the police department, their deaths are still unsolved. My heart goes out to their family and friends. Again, if anyone can help in this matter, please contact the Bartow Police Department. Well, folks, that will do it for now. If you're still here, please click that subscribe button for more stories and like and share this video if so inclined. Also, remember that I upload once or sometimes twice a week, so look out for my videos. Listed below, I have a Patreon link if you want to check that out. That would make me so happy. And join me on my social links, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out my website for some stuff done by me. It's called somestoriesofmine.com. Well, that is enough of me. Remember to love and take care of yourself and others, and I'll catch you on the next one. Love you. Bye.